What is up guys, it's your boy Raid Kakis, and I mean Destiny Raid, not Raid Shadow Legends. Although I did pull a Kaimar, I'm very excited about that. No, okay, back on track. Today, we have got to talk about the brand new Pantheon Raid Challenge that was just added to Destiny 2 with the weekly reset during the Into the Light free DLC. Guys, there are certain aspects about Pantheon that are utterly insane and if you can capitalize on them you could have a massive boost to your account so what the heck is pantheon well again it's a raid challenge so when you load this activity up, you're going to have to complete four different raid encounters from across four different raids. The first one is Golgroth from King's Fall. The next one is Caretaker from Vow of the Disciple. After that, it's going to be the Planetarium guy from Root of Nightmares. And then it's going to end with Atrax from the Deepstone Crypt. Now, Bungie was saying that these encounters would be changed for Pantheon, and after playing it, I have to say, barely, right? There is going to be more and often harder enemies you have to fight. You're also going to be at a 5 light level disadvantage for this week, and we'll get to that in a sec, and there are some slight mechanical changes. For example, in the Golgroth encounter, when you're DPS in Golgroth, usually like one person gets the unstable light debuff and they have to run out and go and bust off by themselves. Wait, anyways, and then come back and get back to DPSing. Apparently in Pantheon, two people are gonna get unstable light. But this is really not going to change too much because if you're doing the mechanics properly, you're already just watching out for unstable light and if you have it, you leave the group. So whether that's two people or even three people, they're all gonna go and do the same thing. So again, there are some very slight differences, but if you are someone who has beaten the original versions of these encounters, you should be able to kind of blast through this no problem. Especially because right now, Pantheon is the easiest it will ever be, and that's because in the following weeks, more encounters will be added and the light level disadvantage will grow. So every single week, it will just get harder and harder and harder. And so if you're not someone who raids often, if you're someone who's never done a raid before, this is the week to do it, especially because I think you can make a compelling argument that Pantheon is actually easier than the original encounters in the normal difficulty raids. And that's because you actually gain access to elemental surges. Both Void Surge and Strand Surge are active, as well as a new modifier, Class Warfare, where using your class ability is going to boost your damage and reduce your incoming damage. So when you're DPSing bosses, you have a, what, 20, 25% void weapon damage boost? Are you serious? I'm going to throw on my Edge Transit Heavy Grenade Launcher and absolutely dump truck these raid bosses. And that's going to be a significant advantage over trying to do this with no modifiers in, again, a normal difficulty raid, even though you're at a 5 light level disadvantage. And the same goes for ad clearing. Yes, there's a little bit more difficult ads, but if my weapons, if my strand weapons are chunking even more than in normal difficulty, I think that kind of offsets it, right? And with all of this in mind, I am absolutely encouraging, no, I am urging everyone who can to try to complete one run of Pantheon on this week while it's at its easiest because the loot oh the loot for pantheon is beyond anything i have ever seen guys one run of pantheon will give you the equivalent of five runs worth of a raid in fact, let's say three runs of a normal raid and two master difficulty runs. The loot quality is absolutely busted. Here, I'm, I'm going to show you guys. So, for the very first counter, Golgoroth, as you can see right here, all the encounters are going to break down as follows. You get one guaranteed adept raid weapon. So previously, you would have to do master raids, which are a lot harder than Pantheon. 
And then after that, you're going to get three more raid rewards. So you can see I got two raid weapons and one piece of raid armor. And these weapons and armor are from across different raids, guys. Moving on from there for encounter two, again, the one guaranteed adept raid weapon, one additional raid weapon, and then two pieces of raid armor for a total of four pieces of raid gear from one encounter. Then encounter three, again, the adept raid weapon, two more raid weapons, one piece of raid armor, and then we end here with encounter four, one adept weapon, two more raid weapons, one more piece of raid armor. Now, it should be noted I am getting additional rewards for completing these encounters within the allotted time frame. However, these time frames were never that challenging and you can always just restart the encounter. So if it looks like you're not going to complete it in time, just wipe and try again. There's no penalty for doing so. And if that already sounds good, we're actually nowhere near done. Now that's because at the final encounter, as you can see, a new vendor actually appears. So I can actually access the Deep Stone Crypt loot table and buy more raid weapons if I wanted to, just like if I would complete a normal Deep Stone Crypt raid. And also, this vendor is offering me a guaranteed raid weapon if I don't already have them, and also, guys, on top of that, you can then go into your Triumph page and claim even more Adept Raid weapons. This is what I'm talking about. This is, again, literally five raid runs worth of loot, if not arguably more, because you're getting the exotic. Some people have to run 30 raids before they get the exotic to drop in one activity. Like the, the value for your time, the amount of loot you get for your input doing one Pantheon run is so incredibly high compared to any other raid activity. You just have to try to do it this week, guys. And again, if you've never done a raid before, I put out my Pantheon guide going over the mechanics of every single encounter. So you should be able to just go in and use that guide and learn how to run Pantheon even if you haven't done any of the original raids. And that concludes my plea to try to get people to complete Pantheon while it's at its easiest. Guys, if you have some friends that are a bit more casual, try to carry them through. The sheer volume of raid gear they're going to get for one run is just absurd. And remember, we're talking about raid weapons. These are some of the most powerful and best weapons in the entire game. I mean, the Zyuli's Bane hand cannon that you get guaranteed for the Triumph has explosive payload plus one for all that's a fantastic role right and this whole thing is probably just going to get harder like next week is going to be interesting because there's actually going to be one more encounter and i presume that just means it is going to technically be more rewarding like i would imagine that all of the existing encounters drop the same four pieces of raid gear uh, again like next week and then you actually have a fifth encounter so you can get even more for one run however the light level discrepancy is going to be a bit higher it's gonna really depend on what the modifiers potentially change to maybe hard modifiers will start to be added and i don't think you can go backwards like i don't think you can select week one pantheon when next week arrives it's just gonna get harder and then when week three arrives, it's gonna get even harder. And so like the longer you wait to do your Pantheon run, you, you again, you can't go backwards in difficulty. You're just gonna be presented with a more challenging run. But also this whole thing brings up the question, since when is Bungie so generous with raid loot? And why can't they do this more often? I mean, they are literally throwing raid weapons at people. I wish it was like this for Master Raid. Because, I mean, Master Difficulty raids are nowhere near this rewarding, I feel. Like, they are much more challenging, and, like, often you have to come back different weeks to try to get the exact weapons you want because there's predetermined loot tables and stuff like that. It's just not a great experience. And also, because uh, the Adept raid weapons, like, they're not technically craftable, that's also really soured the reward pool of Master Raid. In Pantheon, like, you're just getting so much volume of loot that if you're a new player, like, yeah, I'll take the Adept Raid weapons, I'll take the normal Raid weapons, I'll take uh, the Raid armor, I'll take the Spoils of Conquest, like, you're just getting so much raw volume of stuff, it feels like 
other raid activities should try to be as rewarding as this. So we're, I'll have to see in the future if maybe this is a new direction Bungie is going in terms of raid rewards. But yeah, guys, that's it for the video. Just want to talk about Pantheon and how insane the drops are. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That is linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.